What's up guys? Today I'm going to turn my dog Charlie into Slink from Toy Story. After all, they're both wiener dogs and they actually kind of look the same. Check this out. First, I went to my friends at Objects Unlimited. We needed to get Charlie 3D scanned. And as you can tell, he's pretty hyped. So utilizing some treats, I got Charlie inside of this machine, which has 128 cameras all focused on the centerpiece, which in this case is Charlie. We snapped a couple pictures. So far, so good. Next, it gets sent off to Andrew, who's a designer at Objects Unlimited. His job is to make this into a 3D file, but to clean up any areas that the cameras may have missed. So he's touching up Charlie's nose, a little parts of his ear, but just in general, make this as nice as possible before it gets 3D printed. Next, we slice off the top and bottom half of Charlie and delete the center part. Once that's done, it gets sent off to be 3D printed. And after about eight hours, the piece was done. So using a vacuum, all the surrounding powder gets sucked up and recycled for the next print. And after a couple minutes, Charlie's two halves are finally revealed. But they're covered in powder. So both pieces then get air blasted to clean What's up, guys? Clean up any extra powder that's on the surface. After most of the excess dust has been removed, it's time for the post-processing, which does take a little bit of time. So Ryan here from Objects Unlimited uses an assortment of tools that go on a Dremel. And his job is to basically polish up this piece and remove any extra fine dust that might get stuck in the cracks. You've got a friend in Once that's done, Charlie's two halves then get soaked in super glue. Right now, the piece is very absorbent. So by soaking it in super glue, it's gonna suck it all up and make it a lot stronger. While at the same time, really saturating the colors. Next, using some high grit sandpaper, any blemishes or sharp edges from the print get sanded down. And I know this looks like we're going backwards, but the next step where he gets soaked in a hot wax removes any of the blemishes from the sandpaper. And at the same time, making the piece even stronger. Like this. While that dries, I go see my friend Kate. She's going to make some acrylic bases for Charlie's feet. This will allow him to stand on his own. So using a laser cutter, she cuts out two rectangular pieces a one-for-one -one super glue that gets mixed together and applied to the bottom of Charlie's feet, where then the acrylic stand we just printed gets attached, finally allowing Charlie to stand on his own. Yes! The fun part about this process is I can see what Charlie would look like with a really small body. Next up, Charlie's two halves get wrapped up and sent off to me. Now it's time to add the slinky body. For this, I had to use a giant slinky that I had to buy online, but it had to be modified a little bit. This slinky would have been too long, so I'm only going to take about 20% of this slinky. Using some thick gel super glue, I apply it to the first ring of the slinky, and then I attach it to the front half of Charlie's body, and I repeat the process for the back half as well. And just like that, I've created Slink from Toy Story from a 3D scan of my own wiener dog. Let's see what he thinks. I'll be honest, he was not a fan of this. He just kept staring at it from afar, not sure what to think of it. But it came out so great. Big shout out to my friends at Objects Unlimited for helping me bring this to life. Be sure to like and follow for more fun DIYs. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.